verse number 15, Isaiah chapter 29. We're going to begin reading at verse number 15. When you find it, please stand for the reading of God's Word. It's the custom of ours to stand for God's Word. Isaiah chapter number 29, beginning with verse number 15. One more time, I reckon Patricia will announce that she probably didn't have it on her list, but uh, this evening we will not have our evening service. We will be gathered here at 3 o'clock for those. Everybody's invited. Uh, we've got a few homes picked out. We want to go visit some of the elders of our church that are, are not able to come and uh, sing to them. Christmas carol, and so we're not having a Christmas play this year. We're making up with it with Christmas carol. So if you'd like to come, be here at church at three, and we'll all go as a group. If you have someone in the vicinity of Excel, Frisco, Monroe, somewhere, you know, just keep it kind of in a box. Um, if you have someone that you've laid upon your heart to go sing to, maybe it's an elder or something, other that don't get to come out very much no more. Uh, just let me know after service when we kind of make us a little trail of which direction we're going to go. If you found the scripture, say amen. amen. Isaiah 29, beginning with verse number 15. Woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord, and their works are in the dark, and they say, Who seeth us, and who knoweth us? Surely you're turning of things upside down. Somebody shout upside down. <laughs> Shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. For shall the work say of him that made it, he made me not? Or shall the thing framed say of him that framed it, he had not? He had no understanding? Is it not yet a very little while, and Lebanon shall be turned into a fruitful field? And the fruitful field shall be esteemed as a forest. And in that day shall the deaf hear the words of the book, and the eyes of the blind shall see out of the obscurity and out of darkness. The meek also shall increase their joy in the Lord, and the poor among men shall rejoice in the Holy One of Israel. For the terrible one is brought to naught, and the scorner is consumed, and all that watch for iniquity are cut off, that make a man an offender for a word, and lay a snare for him that reproveth in the gate, and turn aside the just for a thing of naught. Therefore, thus saith the Lord who redeemed Abraham concerning the house of Jacob, Jacob shall, Jacob shall not be ashamed, neither shall his face not now wax pale. But when he seeth his children the work of mine hands in the midst of him, they shall sanctify my name and sanctify the Holy One of Jacob, and shall fear the God of Israel. They also that err in spirit shall come to understanding, and they that murmur shall learn doctrine. Pray with me today, if you will, Father. We thank you for these people that have come to support your ministry, God. This is your house. We're here to, to, to build a legacy to your name, God, to give you glory and honor. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Father, let us decrease this morning, this Sunday morning, this beautiful morning that you've made, Lord, and let you increase. We're here to lift you up, for you said in your word, if you be lifted up, you draw all men unto you. Your mission was to seek and to save that which was lost. That's our same mission today. And if our hearts are not right before you, God, send your spirit by to, to convict and reprove us of our sin, Lord, and give us grace to fix where we have flawed at. God, I pray for the abundance of my heart today that my mouth will speak and my heart may be filled with love. I don't want to bruise one of your people, Lord. I want to edify your body with the gift of preaching. I pray for a good spirit in your house today. The Bible said the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord at, there is liberty. Above all, I pray that not a soul leaves this church lost and undone, heading to a devil's hell that has not been prepared for them, but that all will be redeemed before they leave this sanctuary today. And that's my earnest desire. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Somebody shout amen. amen. Let's give the Lord some praise for his word today. Before we get into to the word, let's go ahead and give the tone. All right. We took up $8,058. So let's give the Lord some praise. Come on. Thank you so much for your giving. That picks us up to $96,439.17. So I think we'll just go ahead and get started and trust the Lord for the other few thousand dollars. Amen. He brought us a long ways. I believe he's going to take us the rest of the way. we got some visions in the future, so don't 
don't forget to pray for us that the Lord will make a way for the $300,000 deficit that we're under as a church. But uh, I believe you have to crawl before you walk. Amen? Amen. And so we thank you today. Let's all just close our eyes for a second before we begin to preach today. I want you to lift your hands up to heaven. I want you to do There's something about that song those girls were singing. And the song says, You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. I think you need to hear that today, that Jesus Christ loves you. Amen. Somebody sing that with us. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You were perfect in all of your ways to us. I think sometimes we get too big of a hurry in the house of God and forget why we're here. Amen. John 4 and 24 says, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. How many would love to see everybody walk out of this church today redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, washed in the blood of Jesus Christ? We got family members here today, and I hope and pray all of our family members are saved. But if they're not saved, how many would love to see their loved ones on the other side? Amen. How many knows they can't go but one way, and that's the way of the cross? Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father but it be by him. I want to preach today upon the potter and the clay. The potter and the clay. To fill you in with the story in Isaiah, we're used to reading about the potter and the clay in the book of Jeremiah. When he said, I went down to the potter's house and looked at the potter's wheel. But Isaiah the prophet, which is the son of Amos, has been called to preach to God's people. And I'm so thankful today that even when God's people are not doing what we're supposed to do, that God don't throw us away. Amen. I've got a deep desire today to be like Jesus. Hallelujah. Ever since the Lord has saved me, I want to be like Jesus. Amen. I wanted them old things to pass away and those new things to become new. All the things of my past to, to leave me alone and turn away and look toward Jesus. Paul said I had apprehended, but this one thing that I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth into those things which are before. I've had a messed up past, but I got a better future on the horizon. Jesus said if I would come unto him, he would in no wise cast me out. How many is grateful today that the well is still open. The well is still got plenty of water and out of our belly shall flow rivers of living water. Amen. And the Bible teaches us that this prophet was called to preach to the children of God and the children of God. First thing I want to talk about in the story today to the children of God was living a half-hearted lukewarm life. They had gotten to the place in their life that they were doing what was right in their own eyes. They were calling their sin righteousness, and I don't believe we're living in a generation today that calls wrong right and right wrong. How many knows the day of God said it was sin is still sin today? We can't change the word of God. We can't add to the word of God. We can't take away from the word of God. We must line up with the word of God. And the Bible said that when Isaiah came and he began to speak to the children of Israel, he says in verse 16, Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. You know, it's bad when we got things upside down. There comes a time in our life where pride and ego begins to step in. And a lot of people who get saved forgot who they used to be. I come to tell you today, don't never forget who you used to be. If it wasn't for the Lord that was on your side, you'd still be all messed up today. It's by the grace of God that you are who you are today. And don't you ever forget it, that God is God. He's King of kings and Lord of lords. And these people have been brought out of Egypt. 
had been brought out of some hard times and been led through the wilderness and was going into the promised land to inherit the blessings of God. How many knows God has called his people to inherit a blessing? How many knows Jesus is the good shepherd? He came that we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly. How many is grateful today that God is the good shepherd? He wants good things for our lives. And here the children of Israel are. They're, they're beginning to get stubborn. And the bad thing about it is, you know, I, my heart hurts for the people who are lost and undone. But my heart hurts for worse for the people who think they're saved and lost and undone. Now, I don't mind a fellow telling me when I invite him to know Jesus Christ that not now or maybe later. Because he's telling me that he's lost and undone. But we're living in a generation today that are being deceived. They're coming to church, they're praising God, but they're not living what the Word of God says to live. I ain't going to have a whole lot of people get in here with me here, but I got to preach what the Word of God said. The Bible teaches us that they was honoring Him with their lips, but their hearts were far from Him. I wonder if you, when you lift your hands up in church, are you lifting them up from your heart? When you lift Jesus up in your praise, are you lifting Him up in your heart? I wish I had some people in the church today that came here and said, I love the Lord with all my heart. Not only my mouth, but I love Him with my heart. I love Him with my life. I love Him with my strength. Every fiber of my being today, I pour my heart out before God because God is in my heart. How many has ever seen marriages where people begin to tell their spouses they love them? And sometimes it's merely words. Come on. I love you is a word that's been often misused. People say they love you, but how many knows you can show your love better than you can tell your love? How many's ever been in church and had a Jews to kiss you and say they loved you, but you knew deep down inside they really didn't love you? How many knows you can feel a Judas spirit? Those that will kiss you to your face and betray you behind your back. Those that will tell you you've done a good job today, but talk to talk about you on Facebook. Come on. Uh oh. Don't fool with my Facebook page. You tell on your own self a lot of times. You put that stuff on Facebook like nobody's supposed to know about. This is called social media. I dare you today to give the Lord some praise and don't worry about what everybody else is doing. I think the world would be better off if everybody mind their own business. All right, preacher, don't do this. We got business here today. The Bible said in 1 Thessalonians 4 and 11 that you study to be quiet. Amen. Come on with it. He said you're going to study to do that because it ain't going to come natural. Great. Look at your neighbor and go, shh. And that you study to be quiet and to do your own business. Was quiet. That's what the Bible said. I don't know if you've ever read that. Study to be quiet and to do your own business and work with your own hands. I believe we had some more hardworking people in America, some hardworking wives that stayed at home. We wouldn't have all this confusion on Facebook. Because you wouldn't have time to tell every little detail of your life. Talking about, child, I'm going to the bathroom. Don't nobody care you're going to the bathroom. I'm going to the bathroom. I'll be right back. Dishes stacked up in the dish drain, two foot tall. Talking about, I'll be right back. Oh, Lord. Stay on the telephone all day long. Talk to Jesus five minutes. Well, it don't matter how long you pray, and it don't matter how long you stay on the phone, but God wants to hear from you every now and then. Oh. Lord, I don't know why the power don't fall no more in church. You ain't talked to Jesus since Sunday. What you expect? You see, these people were living half-hearted, lukewarm lives. It's amazing how people tell me how the, that the old people used to sacrifice to go to church. They used to ride donkeys and wagons and walk if they have to. Yeah. Now we got Cadillacs and heaters and you still can't get them there. Wow. It's going to get better. Just, just hang in there. 
And we think that just because we name the name of Christ, that we're automatically exempt that we're going to heaven. But Jesus says, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. What's that mean, preacher? There's a lot of people that go to the altars and they say a sinner's prayer. You won't find that in the Bible, but they say a sinner's prayer. The preacher says, repeat after me. I come to let you know this morning that the preacher won't save you. There's no need to repeat after him. You need to ask the Lord to help you to pray. Repeat after me. Now, there's nothing wrong with preachers leading in you to a prayer of repentance. I don't, I don't have no fault, man. But too many times we put our trust in man and not in God. And, and after we've said that sinner's prayer, we've confessed Jesus as Lord. The Bible said in Romans 10 and 9 that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and thou shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead. Come on, Bible readers. Thou shalt be saved. And so we confess the name of Jesus, and we feel like that we're automatically exempt to go to heaven. And Jesus comes up with this doctrine that don't believe everything that you hear. The Bible says to study the scriptures, search the scriptures, for in you, you think you have salvation. Yeah. Wouldn't it be a horrible thing to go to church all your life, think you go to heaven and wake up in hell? Yeah. Oh, it's quiet. You, you see, a lot of people don't read their Bibles. The only Bible they know is what they hear in church. What they hear Dr. Evans say in the morning time. I don't think you need to let Dr. Evans lead you to heaven. I think you need to let the Spirit of God and the Word of God lead you to heaven. Nothing wrong with listening to Dr. Evans and all the other ones on there. But if you don't have no foundation in the Word of God, you don't even know if they're preaching the right stuff. You're sitting there amen, and you don't even know what you're amen to. We get, we get caught up in services sometimes, and, and just because everybody else claps, we clap. You better watch what you're clapping at. You better watch what you shout amen to. If it ain't right, don't say amen. Come on. Uh-oh. Now nah, ain't nobody going to clap now. Nah, ain't, ain't clap now. I can preach now. And sometimes people's egos are on their shoulders and they bring their pride up in church. You know people used to be scared of the Lord. People used to fear the Lord. That if a sinner walked into the congregation of God's house, that were conviction would, would, would grip their hearts and their souls, and they would either have to make a decision to serve God and get in those altars or leave and never come back. That's just how much power. I believe the power of God is still available today, but we don't call sin, sin no more. We look over, and just because the, the board can live that, then we can live that. Or just because the ministers can live that, we can live that. I don't care who lives it. If it's sin, God says I ain't pleased with it. I sent my son to do away with the sin of the world. Yeah. Amen. Don't be quiet on me. Just because I said something about your son. Amen. We just need to know what we're clapping about. And now all of a sudden these people are, they're, they're, they're hypocrites. They praise God on Sundays. They give their money in the offering plate. I just want to let you know, God, we appreciate the money, but you can't buy your way to heaven. You put all the money in the offering plate that you want to, but if your name's not written down in the Lamb's Book of Life, you cannot go to heaven on your good works. Come on. You can't buy yourself a trip to heaven. Jesus has already paid for it. We've been bought by price. But I marvel at the people that thinks their money can take them to heaven. I tell you what your money can do. It can take you to hell. A rich young ruler came to Jesus by night and said, What must I do to inherit eternal life? He said, You know the commandments. Some people don't even think the commandments is sufficient no more. We don't have to go by the commandments. It's a funny thing that Jesus preached the commandments. They tear them down out of the courthouse, and now the church is letting them go out of the house of God. What is this world turning to? It's turning to a pagan country. If we don't have some men and women of God to stand up and face the truth and say, I stand on the word of God if I have to stand right by myself. Yeah, amen. We need some 
folks that will stand for the word of God. The Bible said in Isaiah 48, the grass withered, the flower faded, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Somebody shout forever. We don't even understand forever. We see folks that live to be 105 and we flip out saying, Lord, how mercy. They was old. We don't understand forever. The Bible said one day is a thousand years with the Lord and a thousand years is but one day. And these people were living a hypocrite life. They were they were coming to church. They were still doing their thing. They, they were giving their they were giving their alms. And just like the rich young ruler said, What must I do? And Jesus preached the commandment. He said, You know the commandments, thou shalt not kill, and thou shalt not steal, and thou shalt not commit adultery. And and, and old and old self righteous stood up, he said, Oh the Lord, I've done these things from my childhood up. <laughs> Jesus says, Oh yeah. He said, You still lack one thing. Because if you're trying to please the Lord, or the Lord with your righteousness, you're always going to come up short. For we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. It's by the grace of God that we're saved. Somebody give the Lord some praise today for that amazing grace. And, and, and so when we hear that, we automatically dismiss works. Because of the scripture that says, by grace you're saved through faith, not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works, not of works, not of works, lest any man should boast. And then we go around and say, it's all by grace. We don't have to have no works. But then James comes and he writes, but faith without works is dead. And then you have you, then you have Paul that says we're not justified by our works. Uh oh. Yeah. And then we have James that says Abraham was justified by his works. Right. Hmm. And then we go by twenty different Bibles trying to figure out what does he mean. When the truth of the matter is, it's going to be by works, but it's not going to be our works. Greater is he that's in us than he that is in the world. Amen. Friend, if you come to know Jesus Christ and somewhere or another along the way, you're not living the life that God expects you to live. How many knows that you've slipped off the wagon, you backslid, you're not where you're supposed to be at with God. And you cannot tell this, this age nothing. They already know it all. They got a know-it-all, stinking, prideful attitude that when people come to come to church and you try to teach them about salvation, they don't want to talk to you about the Bible. They've already heard it on the radio, and you can't tell them nothing. Yeah. Right. Right. It's gonna get better after a while. This is what I say after a while. After a while, hang in there. This preacher's mad at everybody. I'm not mad at everybody. I'm just preaching what the Word of God teaches us to preach. Amen? Amen. And though, though nowadays they call them unpopular preachers because they can't build a big church. Because, But I'd rather have a small church and the truth being preached and the anointing of God. And for those that are there that are going to heaven and have a holy flock of going to hell. And me going to be judged by the way I let them to. Amen? And, 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 and so we bounce up in the church on Sundays and we keep praising the Lord. But then we go out on Mondays and we live a life of sin. And then this is what they say. Well, mine's not as bad as theirs. And God sends prophets and preachers like myself to preach a message. And it can be discouraging sometimes because you're not going to have many people shake your hand and pat you on your back and say, well, good job, preacher. It's all good job. I enjoyed the message today. Now they leave out there pouting and mad and snobby and and Amos, the son of Amos, Isaiah said, I didn't come here to serve the people anyhow. I come here to serve the Lord. Amen. And it don't really make no difference what the people has to say. When I stand before God, people ain't going to let me in. Jesus is the only way. Jesus is the door. Amen. Amen. And, and, and he tells the man that says, you know, I've done, I've done all these things in my childhood. He says, you lack one thing. Go and sell what you have and give it to the poor. That man didn't want to talk to Jesus no more. The Bible said he went away sad. The Bible said that it's easier for a camel.
Bible to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to. Am I preaching it today? Have y'all read it like that before? It's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to go to him. But it's not impossible because we can have money and share it with others and the Lord will still bless us. For if we give, it shall be given back unto us. Press down, shake it together, run it over, shall men give unto your book. What am I going to get? You're going to get what you gave for God. It's not a man that he should be mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. You cannot sow to the flesh and reap everlasting life. And I don't care what preacher stands over your casket on your funeral and tells you that you're going to heaven. If you didn't sow to the spirit, you're not going. Sow to the flesh, you shall reap corruption. Second thing that I want to talk about here that when Amos, I mean Isaiah, the son of Amos, Tells them that things were upside down and they're thinking of the clay more than the potter. And they got this pride and this ego that they still praise God, but they don't live what God's word tells them to live. That he starts talking about the potter's clay. And verse number 16 says, For shall the work say of him that made it, he hath made me not? Or shall the thing frame say of him that framed he had no understanding? Sometimes we feel like God don't know what he's doing because of the way our lives turn upside down. And I want to let you know today that God knows what's best for us. Amen. We want this out of our life and God sends us through that. But I tell you what, if you'll stay on the potter's wheel and let the Lord continue working on your life, when you get to the end, you'll turn around and say, Lord, I thank you for what you allowed me to go through because this made me a better person. Amen. How many has been through some things they wish they didn't have to go through? Or maybe they could have went around or maybe on top of them. But the Bible said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow. He didn't say he was taking us over the valley. He didn't say he was taking a shortcut around the valley. He said, I'll be glorified in the valley. For I am the lily of the valley. I am the bright morning star. If you'll honor me as king and king and lord of lords, lo, I'll be with you even to the end of the world. There's no height. There's no depth. There's nothing that can separate us from the love of God. Which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And, 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 and the thing that came to my mind as I began to study on powders and clay that clay was a piece of dirt type of soil whatever you want to call it that was been rained on a lot and been through a lot of weather that had started drying and cracking. In other words, when the Lord passed by our way, we was broken, cracked up, messed up, flawed up. And the Lord had enough of mercy in that situation to pick us up out of the clay and set us on the potter's wheel. And now he begins to mold our lives. But how many knows he's got to mess it all up before he can put it back together again? And we don't like the messing up process when he goes to messing with our lives. But a lot of people want Jesus to be Savior of their lives, but they don't want him to be Lord of their lives. Yes. Lord means that I surrender to whatever you say. That's your will. Thy will be done, not mine. And when you get on the potter's wheel and he begins to put him, put you in his hand, I don't know about y'all, but I'm thankful today that my life is in God's hands. It's not in my in my friend's hands. It's not in my, my spouse's hands. It's not in my kid's hand. Although I love my friends, my spouses, but they can only do so much. But when things look impossible, that I'm in the hands of the master and he can do whatever he sees fit in my life. And one thing that I love about it so much that all things, work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. I might be flawed up right now. I might be cracked up right now, but I come to let you know that the Lord is still working on me. And when he gets through with me, I'm going to be perfect in his sight. I might not be perfect in man's sight, but as long as Jesus says, well done, thou good and faithful servant. That's all that matters. That's all that matters. Somebody shout, he's still working on me. Hey, you know one thing that I love about these stories? Yes, the children of Israel was messed up. Yes, they were messing up. And God knew they were going to mess up again. 
but he didn't throw them away. Amen. That's what I love about Jesus. He knew what kind of condition I was in. He knew what kind of condition I was going to be in. But he looked beyond my faults and saw my needs and said, this old boy needs a little love in his life. He needs a little touch from the master's hand. He's had touch from folks' hands. And a pat on the back might do you good, but there ain't nobody can do you like Jesus can do you. When he touches you, your life will change. I can remember when I got saved that morning, I was so broken and messed up that all. Uh, I tried my best to let humans and doctors and, 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 and all kind of people give me counsel and give me help. And there I was dying at 22 years old and I thought to myself, I can't die. I'm too young to die. I got a little girl I got to raise. How many knows death is no respect of person or age? You don't make no difference how old you are. When your time comes, you're gone. How many knows God can spare your number? And I began to cry out of a broken heart and an empty heart. And I began to ask the Lord, Lord, I ain't never had nothing to do with you in my whole life. I ain't never wanted nothing to do with you in my whole life, but I sure do need something now. I began to ask Jesus Christ, I'm going to be honest with you. When I began to pray to the Lord, I really didn't believe what I was praying about. That's how ignorant I was from the things of God. But I didn't have no choice. Oh, I love it when God gets you to the Red Sea and you ain't got nowhere else to go. If I go far, I'm going to drown. If I go backward, the devil going to get me. How many ever been in a place in your life that you didn't want to come to church? You was made to come to church. And they tell me nowadays, parents tell me, I ain't going to make my children go. If they want to go, they'll go. You raise your child how you want to, but I like them kids that are on drugs. Drug the church. I ain't talking about the bad drugs. Some of you are like, oh, Lord. No. Them, them kids that are drugged to church. You can't let a child make up their mind. Every child gonna want to stay at home. Pizza and popcorn and TV and Nintendo games and iPhones and iPods. You think they're gonna come to church where they sit there and they get bored and they go to sleep the whole service? Oh, but what happens to the day that when Jesus Christ gets a hold of our youth? Come on, gets a hold of our teenagers, gets a hold of our little ones, and they begin to pull the Holy Ghost out of our own. Oh, no, they're too young. The Bible said in the last days it shall come to pass. That he'll pour out his spirit upon all flesh. Somebody say all of it. Yeah, amen. And, 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 and as I began to cry out in my heart that the Lord would help me, I really, I, I just felt like that I had no faith. How many ever felt like they've been low in faith, low in self-esteem, low in confidence, low in everything, that the Lord don't love me, everybody else don't love me, and, and I was a drug addict, and I just really didn't, you know, the world looks down upon those people, and they don't want them around, I can't blame them, they don't want, they don't want them, they're scared they're going to steal some of your money, they nasty, they ain't had no bath, just stay away from them, and there I was like an oddball, it's amazing when I first came in church of how little people sat around me, and now that I'm a preacher, they're opening the door for me. Do you know where I come from? It's amazing how church folks love on the preachers, but when the sinner walks in, and then they wonder why church won't fill up. They got their little clique they always talk to. When it comes time to eat in the fellowship hall, you got one little group, you always stay around. Why? Because that's our comfort. You let a sinner come from the streets to spend in the newspaper known for committing crimes? And we'll shun them and let them sit on the back pew. Oh, but James said being a respecter of persons is sin. If you look at the man with the gay clothing on and say, oh, you come and sit here and put the one that's got the poor clothing on. You sit back there in the back. I don't know about y'all, but Jesus didn't shun me. He welcomed me. He drawed me. He loved me. He put me in the Father's hands. And the Father's still working on me today. Praise God for the ones that came to Jesus. And Jesus is still working on them. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. If you've been redeemed, give him some praise in his house. 
and, and, and I've been down those altars and I really didn't I really didn't feel like the Lord could help me out what I was going through. But I was I mean I didn't have nothing I didn't have no other way. And it's so a shame when people put God at the end of things and say, Lord, I'm, you know, you're my last resort, you're my last and, and God is so merciful that He takes no meaning anyhow. He could sit back and say, Why'd you live? why'd you choose me last? Or blah blah blah. But he didn't come to condemn the world. He come that they might be saved. That's what he said. Gee, God didn't send his son in the world to condemn the world. We see people messing up. First thing we want to do is put a stone out and stone them. But Jesus said that you to be without sin, you go ahead and cast the first one. Uh-oh. Come on, somebody. He don't want us living in sin. He told the woman, go and sin no more. But aren't you so glad that if we sin, that we have an advocate with the Father? Come on, somebody. Jesus Christ, our propitiation, that ever liveth to make an intercession for the saints according to the will of God. We got him sitting at the right hand of the Father. And he says, when you don't feel like praying for yourself and your heart's very heavy and burdened, I'll lift you up in prayer. I don't know about y'all, but I get excited when I think about Jesus. When I don't have the strength to pray, he's praying for and I don't know about y'all, but he would be the best one that I could choose. Amen. Pray for me today because when he asks the Father something, Amen, he normally Amen. gets what he wants. Amen. I can only think about it a couple times, but nevertheless, there I am praying and I'm broken. And honestly, you know, I, I, I begin to think about how people will make crazy comments in church. Let, let, me, let me give you an instance of a crazy comment. Well, boy, if you don't feel the fire of God today, you would sweat. <laughs> yeah. Crazy comment. Yeah. And for that one back there that really means sincere out of their heart, they go out of the church thinking that they're wood sweat. Yeah, preach, bro. I don't want to even come back to church because you had all the fire that day. They couldn't get none. Oh, what I got to you should have felt the burdens lift off my shoulder, Lord, I felt the glory. Does it say you're supposed to feel that when you get saved? <clears throat> Salvation ain't about feelings at all. It's all about faith. And when I gave my heart to the Lord, I didn't feel nothing. Uh-oh. Now we're going to get biblical and not religious. I didn't feel nothing. I cried. The Lord broke my heart. When I asked Jesus Christ to come in my heart, I didn't feel nothing. Oh, bless the Lord, brother. When the Holy Spirit comes inside of you, you feel an earthquake. You may have did, but I didn't. Well, you ain't saved. Uh-oh, now we're judging. Come on. How many know there's only one person knows you're saved, and that's you and God? Two people, you and God. I might can judge your fruit, but I can't judge your heart. I might can see your fruit, but I can't see your root. Come on. And, 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 and so I prayed, and I really didn't believe, but I did believe I have enough. How many of those that he's dealt to every man the measure of faith? I didn't have much. All I had was just a little bit. I'm so thankful that the Lord today to take out a little bit, bless it, break it, multiply. And the next thing you know, your testimony begins to touch people all around. You didn't even think you had enough of a testimony to save yourself. And now what God's doing through your life, he took your little crumbs that you brought to him. He blessed and now he's feeding all kind of folks around. And you don't even know what he's doing in your life. And it all happen because you came to Jesus. Don't never underestimate the power of coming to Jesus. Because on that powder's wheel, people may walk by while he's got his hands upon you and say, hmm, oh, he's all messed up. But until the wheel quits spinning, don't look at me now. Because he ain't through with me. He's still molding me. Amen. Amen. People nowadays play with pottery. They they do it for for, for you know. They was at the uh, what's that thing you was working at the other Rackers Mill. They had the guy out there doing the pottery with. They do it for just play. Uh, back then, these were vessels that they were making. And what really stinked about the whole situation was, because there we are. Have you ever felt like that your your spend your your spend time going around has lasted too long and the Lord should already be gonna help you out by now and you still struggling with some of the things that you struggled with when you came to him and you're like, Lord, are you gonna ever get through with me? Some people just hard hit. I don't know if y'all struggle with that problem. Some people just fight against the Lord. 
But the thing about it was it stinks so bad that when he gets through with the potter, uh, the clay, and, and, he, and it's, it's a vessel like he wants, it's still got to go through the fire before anybody can use it. So after the pain of, of, of being formed into his image, now he sends you through the fire. Have you ever felt like your life when you gave it to Jesus Christ has been affliction after affliction after affliction after affliction and you keep saying in your spirit that when I get through this trial, I'm going to praise the Lord. But you're so quiet in church because you keep waiting for your afflictions to go away for you praise the Lord. And I want to let you know as long as you got breath in your body, you're going to be in affliction after affliction after affliction because many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord Lord delivered him out of them all. So besides waiting for your affliction to go away, just go ahead and praise God in the middle of your affliction and say, Lord, to you be the glory, the honor, and the praise. I don't know when I'm going to get out, but while I'm in it, I'm going to give you praise. And then you're going to bring people to know Jesus because I want to let you know something. It's a shame that you can go to your grandkids' ball game and shout the field down. Here, Johnny. Go, Johnny. I mean, everybody be looking at you shouting all over that baseball. Game. And boy, if one of them touch that child, Lord, I mercy, you lost your sanctification. You better get your hands on my grandbaby. <laughs> but when we come up in church, I don't understand that. When Alabama and Auburn play, beat the couches to pieces. <laughs> Turn the tables upside down, shouting all over, <laughs> acting like a nut. <laughs> <coughs> Get the <to> church. <coughs> we so sophisticated, we can't even give God the praise. Yeah. And Jesus says it like this when he entered into his his Jerusalem for his last entry before he was going to the cross. People around him, they may not have much education, but they had seen what he had done and they believed that he was king of kings. And they began to throw branches before his pathway as he rode in on the donkey. And all the religious people of that day stopped and said, ho, 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 y'all can't do that. And Jesus speaks up because if he finds someone that'll praise him in the midst of what they're going through while they're on the potter's wheel, He'll stand up on your behalf and fight your case for you. He says, if these people quit praising me, the rocks are going to cry out. Oh, my God, if we can get churches filled back with people that shout loud in churches, they do on the baseball field. Oh, this is the house of God. We can't do that. God says he's tired of coming to the house of God, and it sounds like a pin. You can hear a pin drop. It's so quiet. But then you go to these football games, and you yell your lungs out. You may say, there's no no need in praising him. The Bible said that he inhabits the praises of his people. And I don't know about y'all, but we need some sick folks healed around here. We need some lost people saved around here. We need some devils to leave our kids alone around here. We need some of our kids off the dope around here. And if you want that to happen, Jesus is going to have to come here. And the only source that he gave us is to praise him. I don't feel nothing. No, I ain't feel nothing. You ain't going to feel nothing. You're going to sit there and dry like a statue. Praise God. He's not through with us yet, but in a little while, verse 17 says, and Lebanon shall be turned into a fruitful field. Church, the Lord blessed me in my spirit this morning. Last night as I began to study for this, to tell the church he's not through with us yet. Everybody's talking about the 19th century and years ago when the great revival moved in the United States of America became what it came. It looks like we're on the verge of a, just a collapse in our economy and in our senates and our governors and our president. And it looks like our country's gone. But if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will he hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal their land. Church, if we will humble ourselves 
and not have it turned upside down where we're on top and God's on the bottom. He said that if we'll humble ourselves before the mighty hand of God, he will exalt us in due season. But if a man uh, exalts himself, he shall be abased. But if he humbles himself, he shall be exalted. God said, I'm not through with the United States of America just like I wasn't through with Israel. And the enemy gathered around and mocked at us while we were being chastised. But who he loves, he chastises. And when he gets through whipping me, he's going to come over and let me know that he loves me. And that chastisement is going to make me a better person for his glory. Amen. When he gets through with me, I'm going to be a lump to honor. I might be a, a, a chunk of coal right now, but I'm going to be a diamond one day. Ain't that what I'm for? Amen. And, and if you've never been on the potter's wheel today, I want to invite you to stand all over the building, if you will. And God would like to invite you to the potter's wheel today. He wants to make something out of your life. You may be broken, cracked, crumbled, dried. Feels like your life is miserable and, and there's no hope. But I come to let you know today, if that's you, there's still peace in God. Jesus Christ is still at the right hand of the Father, interceding for you today, praying for you today, inviting you today. You say, Pastor, I've done that long time ago. I've said to sinners, but I didn't ask all that. I ask, where are you at today? Where's your relationship with God at today? Because he wasn't talking to heathens. He was talking to his own children. They had developed with such an ego and pride and their conscience had been seared with a hot iron. And they were believing a lie but being damned at the whole same time. That's called reprobate mind. If you've never read that in the Bible, it's in the Bible that he will turn us over to a reprobate mind. Yeah. Isn't that What's reprobate? That means you don't know your left hand from your not right hand. How many knows today if God wouldn't open up our spiritual eyes, we'd still be lost today. We gotta know we're lost before we be saved. We gotta see that condition. But I come to church for granny and poppy. That, that, that's good. But are you saved? But I live a pretty good life. I don't harm nobody. I do good. I, that, 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 that's good, but that won't work. You got to know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. He said that I'm going to say unto me, and they're going to say unto me in that day, Lord, hadn't we prophesied in your name? Hadn't we done miracles in your name? Hadn't we done all these wonderful works? And he said, I'm going to say unto them that day, depart from me. I never, never, I never, I never knew you. I knew your ministry. I knew your works. I knew what you did. I know what all kind of stuff that you went around doing for my name, but I never knew you. You see, there's something that happens to me just about every morning that I wouldn't trade for pastoring, hospital visits, prophesying, nothing. And that's called my devotion life in the morning time. I'm going to wake up with the Lord before I go to work, before I go to church, before I go anywhere. I'm going to sit down. Yeah, I don't, I don't kneel very much. I'm going to sit down in my cup, my cup of coffee. And I'm going to have a little talk with Jesus before I go out that day. Throughout the day, I talk to him. At nighttime, I try to talk to him. He's my friend. He can be your friend if you want him to. But if you don't know him, think about it. Judgment's going to be long. It ain't going to be no time. It's going to be for eternity. Bow your heads in the sanctuary, if you will. I want to share this. I've been sharing it with the church before. But, uh,